Okay, so even though we're in Israel, that doesn't mean that we can't take a look at other places. And uh, for today, I was looking at New York City and the resources that they offer uh, as a land appraiser or just someone who wants to get familiarity with the matzav tichnuni or the, the planning of uh, of their app, of their situation. So what they have, from what I've come to understand, is that they have this website called Zola, which stands for Zoning and Land Use. And um, if I'm not mistaken, it's actually user-developed under the New York City's uh, planning department. And we're going to see how you can use it to find out different information about properties and the general neighborhoods and so on and so forth. So first off, just notice the address. It's a Z-O-L-A, Zola Planning. And it can certainly will come through any kind of Google uh, search if you do Zola Maps or Zola NYC Maps. And when it starts off, take a note of, of this legend here. These are different layers that you have. This is what you would call a GIS system, where you have a computer can program that is encompassing many different layers and levels of different information and data. And you can choose what data you want to show. The default here is that it shows you the zoning districts, including commercial districts, and there's commercial overlays. I'm actually going to unselect that. And they give you a map of New York City, the five boroughs. And just to zoom in a little bit here, you'll notice that as of right now, it's just showing major big swaths of land called zoning districts. Uh, there's the zoning codes, there's many zoning codes, but for just on the intro level, it's very simple to understand that the zoning codes, that there's R1, R2, those are all residential. Starting from R1, which means very uh, simple residential, very little, um, what we would say in Hebrew, tzfifut, density, meaning very, very wide and spacious. And as you keep going up to R4, R5, R6, you have high-rise buildings and so on, and a much more dense uh, population. So right now, with the way the map it is, I'm looking at the different residential areas. And just for example, if I were to go onto R3A and I click here, I have a nice window popping up giving me a definition of R3A and what it's about and some of the information about it. And then if I want to learn more about R3A districts, R3A districts, I can click here and I'm told a lot more detail. Um, what's significant for the purposes of New York City, and this is actually very different than what we're used to here in Israel, is that New York City has really come to a point where the entire city has been defined in a uniform way, so that they have a unified system of zoning, a unified plan, so to speak, covering the entire city. Uh, Israel and certainly Jerusalem at this point is not there yet at all. So that in Israel you're dealing with, even within one city, you're dealing with different tochnio, different plans that relate to different parts uh, of the city. And basically it's a, everything's divided into different parts. To know any particular detail about a house, you have to find the particular plan or tochnit that applies to it and see inside that plan how it's defined. Whereas now in New York City, the entire thing it has its own code system so that you can very easily just browse around the entire city and as soon as you see if it's an R32, all the, the areas that are signaled as R32 will have the exact same rules of land use and exposure and height so that you don't have to go digging into individual tochniot for each individual neighborhood you go to. So that's, that's pretty cool about New York City. Uh, so, for example, here, if I would take a look at now the definitions of an R31 district, they tell you um, the maximum lot coverage is 35%. The floor area ratio is 0 0.5. Uh, the perimeter wall. And in a very, very easily, you have a snapshot of the land use, what you can use it for, how you can use it, and how much you can build, how much you have to leave empty, and so on and so forth, for all the different uh, zonings. So, close that. Now that's uh, let's let's go a little bit deeper. Let's go a little bit uh, deeper into resolution, higher resolution, and uh, we come into now individual lots. Okay, and um, as I come in deeper and I see individual lots, let's see if I click on this here right now. Oh, it does give me uh, the tax lots. This actually, I don't I don't know at what point this changed, but that's really this function here, this layer here is tax lots. If I unclick it. 
So then presumably you will not see the tax slots. You're just seeing the zoning. If I click on it, it just gives me the general zone. If I want to see the individual house, I have to click on tax slots. And now I have a new layer. I have this new layer that's showing me each individual tax slot, which is what we would call basically a person's house. This is the perimeter of the person's house. I believe if you... It gives you the actual, it gives you also the address, 26 Whitson Street. If I come down all the way down here, you have aerial imagery. So I'll select that, and it should give me an aerial image. Oh, one second, you have 2016. Yeah, there we go. So you'll see here is that it looks like it's a looks like it's a dumishpachti, a duplex. That's what, I think that's what, I think what that's called in English. It's a uh, two units shared by a common wall. 26 widths in and 28 widths in. And that's my aerial image right there. And I believe also you can do 3D buildings if I click on 3D here. So now that it's a, um, it's now supposedly 3D. Oh, you know what? Let me see. If I take this compass here and I start moving it, right, I start to see the 3D buildings. I don't think that's very helpful. Let's get rid of 3D buildings. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be helpful 3D buildings, but you can at least move it with the compass. You can start moving around the way it's going to be. And in other cases, possibly 3D buildings is helpful. Okay, so let's go back to uh, more of a bird's eye view. And of course, you see here different dates of when aerial imagery was taken. Obviously, as you go further back in time, the quality of the picture is going to be much less. So if I go to 1951, you have just a big bunch of nonsense because it's the quality of technology and the, and the imaging wasn't as good as 2016. Okay, but coming out of aerial imagery for now, let's go back to what we were talking about, which let's say 26 Whitson Street. If I click on it now, I now get on the right side, I get an entire snapshot of all the details of, of this property. I get everything. I get uh, Queens, which is borough four. Uh, every, there's five boroughs. So, and Queens is the fourth. I have the block number and then the individual lot number, which is 54, which is also shown here as the 54. Uh, the zoning district information we have here, we have the owner, the type of house, the area of the lot, which is 2880, and it gives you the dimensions of 30 by 96. Presumably, 30 by 96 uh, should give you the 2880, which it does. I just calculated that. But of course, in cases where the lots are an irregular are irregular, so then it, it won't necessarily equal the area. And it's a whole snapshot. The gross floor area, I'll just point out, is what uh, every all the floors that are built, everything, not just what's on that floor. So if you have a cellar and you have two two floors, everything that's built will be there. Now I'll just point out two two actually important things that I've noticed that are very important is the building info, which redirects you to the Department of Buildings, this BISWeb, and the property records, which is, it redirects you to the Department, I think, of Finance, which gives you all the information regarding ownership of the property and mortgages. You get the entire mortgage history. So let's go further now and explore those two main points. Before I do, actually, let me just point out here on the bottom, you have a lot of the civil uh, civil information that you might be interested in as a person. For example, what police district you, you relate to, what uh, school district you, you're connected to, your sanitation district, all these different things in case you want to reach out to someone, you know who to reach out to, who your city council member is, and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at the most two important, which is building info, which I guess the parallel from the Israeli perspective would be um, the Rishui, that would be based all the licensing of what was done to the building that was done, and the property records, which would be in the parallel Israeli system, would be the Mishpati, in terms of ownership and mortgages and liens and so on and so forth. So let's start with, let's start with the easier one, I think, which is the property records, the ACRIS here, which takes you to, which takes you to this page, which is uh, held by the Department of Finance, and here you'll have a complete. Uh, picture of the history of how ownership has been gone forth. So without going into too much detail into all the different types of things here, what I would point out is that uh, you'll have mortgages, 
you'll have uh, miscellaneous so certain agreements and satisfaction of mortgages. That's certainly something interesting that here you have the mortgage and here you have the satisfaction of mortgage. But of course, this is not enough. You have to actually see the actual document. So that's that's all here in this column here of images. So that if I click on, if I wanted to see this man's mortgage, I click on image here. And I'm given the 26 pages of this man's mortgage. I can read it in very detail. What are the particular conditions of the mortgage and where it stands? This is from a land appraisal point of view. It's it's essential because you really want to understand exactly what are the person's rights in his property, what liens are there, and all the different aspects of what he can and cannot do, and the limits limitations of his ownership. This is very helpful. So that's just we'll leave that for now, and that's that's the. Um, what did I call it in Hebrew? In Hebrew, it's the mishpatis aspect of New York City, but uh, the legal, the ownership aspect held by the Department of Finance. Let me close this. Let's go back to our original Zola. And the other side of this is the building info, which this redirects you to Tzada Rishui, the, the licensing aspect in terms of the building itself and what was done to the building. So I'm, I'm seeing already here now that, for, interesting, I didn't know this, but on this particular property, it actually has two separate bin numbers, one for the actual property of 26 Whitson and one for the garage of 26 Whitson. Let's take a look at the house itself. Click on the bin number. And here you have the profile in terms of the Department of Buildings. I don't understand everything that's here. But uh, you'll notice uh, certain things that are certainly relevant to the building. Uh, you'll have questions of um, any if there's any landmark status to the building, in particular restrictions to the building. Down below here, you'll have a summary if there's been any complaints over the years by the owner, violations. In this particular case, there's not much here, but there is one jobs filing, so let's click on that. And this takes you to this job, which was... The applicant was Lindenau. The summary is erect one story rear extension to existing dining room. No change. Uh, I don't know what this TZO is. So if I click on the job, it will give me a summary of this job that was performed. The application was approved in 1998. Just pointing out some interesting things. The person who requested the job, continuing on, we have the job type of what it's going to be doing. And again, I'm just pointing out from a very broad perspective how you can get more information and so on and so forth. And that's really it. It's a, uh, it's a very brief textual definition, a summary of what was done. What I will point out, and I was actually very surprised by this, is that there is no online access to the floor plans of this particular job, which is not the case here in Israel. The general in Israel is that Every time you find a heter binia, a building permit of anything, oftentimes online you'll be able to get the floor plans that went along with that heter binia, went, went along with that building permit. And here, uh, New York City, and I think it's really nationwide, there's, I've seen it from different websites, that if you want to get the floor plans of your house or of a different house, you have to physically go to the municipality or go to the record department and request it. And if you're not the owner, you have to get, I think, permission from the owner. It's it's not as uh, accessible as it is here in Israel to get the actual floor plans of the house or of the building. So this just give, offers you a summary of the of the job that was done. It may be that the original building of the house from scratch. It may be an alteration to the house, but no actual floor plans will ever be shown to you here, which is uh, very different from the system here in Israel. So that is really, in a nutshell, what I've learned from this whole um, from these, this website. And again, it's it's wonderful to see how much information is at your fingertips and how much really, even just as an individual person, you can uh, access you can access a, a wealth of information. In any event, I hope this is useful to you. Please give a like if you enjoy, and feel free to leave comments below.